Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I want to compare two of the most popular APS-C cameras from Sony, the ZV-E10 and the A6400. The A6400 was introduced in January 2019, succeeding the popular A6300 with a more advanced autofocus, HDR video, a 180 degrees tilting screen and a small improvement to the sensor. The ZV-E10 arrived more than two years later. Inside it packs the same technology but with the new features and slightly different design that target a specific type of audience, vloggers. Let's see how these two cameras compare, but first a quick round up what the CV-E10 and the A6400 have in common. Both cameras share the same 24 megapixel sensor. They have an ISO from 100 to 33,000, up to 51,200 for the CV-E10 and 102,400 for the A6400 with an extended range. They have a max shutter speed of 1 to 4,000 seconds. They have a hybrid autofocus with 425 points, a real-time tracking, 11 FPS of continuous shooting, a 4K video up to 30p, a full HD video up to 120p, an S-Log2, S-Log3 and HLG profiles. The A6400 is better suited for shooters who have had some experience in shooting with mirrorless cameras. The camera might overwhelm someone coming from the smartphone. The ZV-E10 has addressed this problem and it packs multiple features to make it ideal for beginners. Auto photographers like to take their cameras to varied environments. If this is your case, I would strongly recommend the A6400. The camera packs far superior build quality and it's dust and moisture resistant. The ZV-E10 doesn't pack any form of weather sealing. It is better suited for indoor usage. This makes the A6400 ideal for wildlife photography and general shooting in challenging weather. Both cameras have a compact design, but the ZV-E10 is smaller and lighter than the A6400. The design is very similar and what stands out is the absence of a viewfinder and built-in flash on the ZV model, as well as a larger microphone on top. Another difference concerns the rear monitor. The one on the ZV-E10 has a multi-angle mechanism. You can open it to the side and rotate it to 180 degrees. It's a solution we have seen for years on digital cameras and that's video makers tend to prefer. The the A6400 has a screen that can tilt down to 74 and up to 180 degrees. This solution aims to accommodate photographers without renouncing the possibility to take selfies or vlog. Plus, the screen isn't hinged to the side, which may be a more robust solution. The downside is that any accessory on the hot shoe, like a microphone, will obstruct the view of the LCD when tilting up. So you need to buy an accessory that allows you to attach it to the side. Sony 24's megapixel APS-C sensor is nothing new and it was launched with the Sony A6400 back in 2000. 2014. Over the past few years the sensor had barely been the same. Thus with a good lens photographers can achieve nearly similar results as a cheap 10 years old A6000 body. The same applies to the ZV-E10 and the A6400. Both cameras downsampled 6K footage to ensure sharp and crisp image output. Both cameras doesn't feature in-body image stabilization, but the ZV-E10 has an electronic option called Steady Shot Active Mode that works for video. There is a small crop as a result, which can vary from lens to lens, but it gives you more stabilized footage even if the lens doesn't have optical stabilization. The A6400 doesn't have digital stabilization, so you must rely on the OSS on a lens or a third party support. Both cameras feature a 3.5mm microphone input, but only the ZV-E10 has a headphone output. Given the target to the ZV-E10, Sony has added additional features that aims to make vlogging easy to do. The following options are not found on the A6400. A background defocus, a product showcase, a soft skin effect and a tally light. Both cameras can focus on the eye of a subject, be it human or animal, when working in still mode in single or continuous autofocus. It's a very good system and the eye autofocus in particular is one of the best you can find still today. In video mode, the eye autofocus doesn't work on the A6400, but on the ZV-E10 it works for human only. The A6400 has two settings to control the autofocus behavior in video mode. The ZV-E10 has more advanced control called AF transition speed and AF subject shift sensitivity with seven different levels available. 
The ZV-10 can be found for 550 euro body only or 660 euro with a 16 to 50 mm kit lens. The A6400 is more expensive, going for 800 euro body only or 950 euro with the kit lens. Note that being an older model, you can come across temporary discounts. If you've been following the evolution of Sony's APS-C mirrorless cameras, you may think that the ZV-10 is just an old model, we benched with a new name and few ergonomic changes to just its place in the world. I won't deny that this was my first impression when the first rumors and images surfaced on the web. After using it over the last months, I can understand why this camera exists. Sony has basically reshaped its entry level segment and added features that are like to fast growing trend, vlogging and streaming. It's not a camera made for those waiting on a new sensor or a high end APC product for still photographers. Perhaps not even for those interested in video making in the traditional sense. Choosing between these two models should be normally pretty straightforward. If video with a strong interest in vlogging is your priority, then the ZV-10 looks like the best choice. Plus, it looks a bit easier to use for beginners or someone coming from a smartphone. If photography is also important to you, you may to consider the A6400 mainly because it has a viewfinder and a more robust construction including weather sealing. To be honest, for me, it's a difficult decision to choose between these two cameras. I love filming with the ZV-E10 and I enjoy the big screen. On the other hand, the A6400 offers almost the same filming features and it is a better camera for photos. But if I could have only one APS-C camera, it would probably be the A6400, as I do more photography than video. What's your point of view about these two cameras? Feel free to write it in the comments. And if you like this test, I would be happy if you can give a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, please write it in the comments. I will try to answer everyone. See you next time.